Big, strong kid, 6'4", 225 pounds, a real banger. Indiana got to keep him off the board. Also a father-son combination, coaching and playing. We'll talk more about later. Time now for the Coquilin Fueling Factors. For Indiana, they have got to do a better job as far as turnovers, and they've also got to do a better job inside. As far as turnovers, you can see Indy, they've got to play 40 minutes. They've got to play. Last night they were a bit on the ro roller coaster ride. They've got to play a consistent game, 40 minutes. Turnovers, their guards have got to handle the basketball better. Last night, Sharon Wilkerson had seven of the 17 turnovers. For Bowling Green, a much smaller team, got to do a very, very good job on the boards, rebounding. They've been doing a good job against their opponents, plus eight in Indiana, a much bigger team. And playing at the next level, the MAC Conference, a very, very competitive schedule, but they don't play in Indiana every night. Their coach looking to see if their team can step up to the next level. And those are the Coquilin fueling factors for today's game. Coquilin's fueling factor is their 100% guarantee of high-quality fuel, where 57 years of family pride makes a difference. And we'll be back with the starting lineups in tonight's game after this. Tonight's Indiana basketball game is brought to you by Finish Line. There's Jim Laranega, his son, a junior on the team, a very good player for his dad. 138 victories for Laranega at Bowling Green. We've had a change in the starting lineup, a late change. And Indiana will go with Todd Lindemann, the big center, at seventh foot. Patterson and Evans at the forwards, and Miller and Reed at the guard. So Indiana trying to use a little height advantage, knowing that Bowling Green not a particularly tall team. Coach Knight's probably a little upset. Sean, Sharon Wilkerson did commit seven turnovers last night. And so he inserts Todd Lindemann, who uh, was our super sub off the bench last night, came in and played extremely well. Patterson jumps center for Indiana. And run away. You see the brown and orange, the school colors of Bowling Green. They're in the orange tonight. Comives can't stop Evans going around him. And there's Patterson, a uh, quick two for Indiana. Bowling Green starts out in a man-to-man -man defense. I think it's going to be very, very difficult for them to handle Indiana inside. Indiana much bigger. Very quick with Andre Patterson. Andre Patterson gets off to a great start. Offensive rebound and a putback. 34 is Stacy. He's the freshman to watch. Ninkovic with the ball. He goes out to Daniels. Daniels is the point guard. See Stacy, big, strong, very, very quick. They're going to call traveling right there. Randy, Randy Drury, one of the officials, got Stacy for traveling, but you can see he handles the ball very, very well. He reminds you almost a little bit of Charles Barkley, the way he's out there. There's the series. Bowling Green's been to the Indiana Classic before. The only time that the two teams have met, Phil Bova, Dan Chrisman, and Randy Drury are our Big Ten officials in tonight's game. Dan Chrisman saw that Indiana got the last hand on that, changed the call. Good job by the officials working with one another out there as a team. Ten is Antonio Daniels. Very, very quick. Really likes to get to the basket. Reed will have his hands full, keeping him out. Indiana had a, has had a tough time all year trying to contain guard play, especially containing their guards with dribble, dribble penetration. Ninkovic goes inside. You can see Indiana really laying off Ninkovic. Not a big shooter, more of a feeder inside. Bowling Green going to have to do something because Indiana is going to continue to lay off of it. Indiana's height pays off as Lindemann gets the blocked shot and then a foul at the other end on Ninkovic, pushing off on Lindemann. So the big guy giving uh, Bowling Green some early trouble. Todd Lindemann doing a nice job coming down the floor, filling the lane late. Nice job by Brian Evans of waiting on him. Match up here. That's Comives on Evans. Charlie Miller had the post position. He's, he's got to keep that post position. He needs to keep that post position down inside. Use his athletic ability to get it and then score with his quickness and his jumping ability. Cross court to Reed. Three pointer is short. There's Lindemann. Boy, oh, he fought for that ball and it's a tie. Possession arrow will go to Bowling Green, but very aggressive by Lindemann early in the game. Yeah, Todd, Todd Lindemann really stands up, up above the entire group out there. You can see Neil Reed comes up a little bit short. Ball rebounds to the other side of the, the board, and uh, Inikovic and Lindemann fight for it. Good, good aggressive play by both, both teams. 
2-0, two minutes into the ball game. So a low scoring game. Bowling Green not on track at all offensively. There's Larinaga, 25. Missed on that shot. Patterson boards it. Don't want to give to Lindemann back there on the fast break. And Indiana recovers. Lob pass to Miller. Too late. Took a little too long to set that up. Larinaga knocked it away. Got to throw that a second quicker. Second quicker, it's a dunk instead. Second late, and it's a turnover. Comar is outside. And Bowling Green tries to set again. It's a 1 4 offense. They really haven't been able to set their plays and run them yet. Here's a steal as Reed strips the ball away from Stacy. Good hands by Neil Reed. Got to get it inside right there. Andre Patterson's got to do a better job of setting up down low. He's got to be more aggressive, set up down low like you really want the ball and really aggressively go after it. Charlie Miller gave a decent pass inside. Not the greatest pass in the world, but still it's one that Andre Patterson with his good hands should be able to come up with. Third turnover now for Indiana. That's one turnover a minute. We'll give him 40 for the game. Let's uh, hope that pace doesn't continue. See Daniels really trying to get to the basket. Neil Reed for the second time in a row down the floor strips another player's hands. Very, very active tonight. This time it's Daniels. Neil Reed had an outstanding game last night. Only one turnover. I think he had eight points, seven assists. So uh, Neil Reed's a very, very good play from the Indiana, Indiana Gardens last night. Take a look on the defensive end. Last time down, Daniels dribbles him inside, trying to use his athletic ability and gets him inside. Neil Reed slaps down, gets all ball, and takes it away for the second time in a row. The foul on Ninkovic. That's his second. 6'9", 240. He's met his match with Lindemann. Had to give him that layup to avoid the third foul. Exactly. Great pass by Evans. I think Ed Evans knew right away that Ninakovic had two fouls. you got to go right at him, get him in trouble. This is the five players that Bowling Green, a majority of their time is spent. Charlie Miller trying to jump out in the lane right there. Larinaga not going to let it happen. He's a very, very smart player. As John mentioned, is the coach's son. His first personal, the team's first. Here's Jim Larinaga. He was assistant for Terry Holland of Virginia for several years before coming over to Bowling Green. 4 0, 16 25 left first half. So Bowling Green still looking for their first points. A very good shooting team. The travel there, they've been bothered by turnovers. That's four. They were fourth in the nation last year in field goal shooting percentage. Way above 50%, but they're struggling a little, only 46% this year. Komaiv and Ninakovic, neither are real big offensive powers. Indiana really laying off both players inside. Turning jump shot by Evans, in and out. Rebound to Bowling Green. Daniels has it. The majority of the work on this end is going to be done by Daniels and Stacy. They're really looking to stop the two of them. You can see Komaiv, when he gets the ball, he's looking to pass and then screen down. Try to get Stacy or Larinago. Step in by Reed, prevents Stacy from the drive. Here's Daniels off balance. And Good block out by Todd Lindemann right there. Went, found his man first. It's two times in a row Neil Reed has thrown, thrown lob passes that ju just were not there. Timeout, it's Indiana 4, Bowling Green still the goose egg. We'll be back with more basketball after this. Green still looking for their first points. Good pressure by Sharon. Out at the timeline, here's your shooting percentages. Not very good for either team. Larinaga open inside. Good help by Lindemann. Just gotta stay low with those big guys, or those little guys as you have them. Try to force the outside shot. Patterson needs to switch with Lindemann whenever he gets a chance. There they go, they, get, they got the switch right there. As we said, Lindemann in, Larinaga wild, wild three-pointer, but Wilkerson in for Reed after that second turnover last time down the floor. It was a pass that Patterson would have difficulty picking up uh, whether he was guarded or not. Good pass inside, great feed by Patterson. Todd Lindemann at seven foot has got to get that ball in the basket. Just off the rim. Here's Daniels, good move as he goes to his right around Wilkerson. NBA, they would have counted that shot, but let's see what they do Still here. Still might. Yeah, they're going to get it on the drive, not even going to give him the two shots. So, uh, but Daniels, very, very quick, and you can see he really likes to go to his right. He, he's, he's very good as, as far as taking the ball, a little hesitation dribble, and then trying to get by you. There's Comives. You can see Evans really playing Comives to his left. He's a left-handed player, left-handed shooter, and he really likes to go left. 
Nineman's got the height advantage right here. Here's where you need to stay behind the guy. There's no reason to try to get up in front of him and fight him. He's, he's much bigger than Ninakovic, and he got Ninakovic to travel that time down the floor. Fifth turnover for Bowling Green. And the Indiana fans getting a little restless here. They want some offense. They saw quite a bit last night and 85 points by Indiana. We're already past the five minute mark first half. Patterson's triple teamed inside. Got to give it back out. He does to Sharon. Offense Scrappy. needs to spread out a little bit. You can see how tight it is down inside. There's just no place to throw the basketball. Everybody's tight to the lane. Charlie Miller throws it out of there. They're going to get him with the body down low. Good call by the official. Good block up top, but he got him with the body. You see the Indiana offense. There's just no place to throw the ball. Bowling Green, nice job of getting a hand on the basketball. Daniels, a wonderful athlete, going to take it straight to the hole. You can see Charlie Miller goes up, but you can see he catches him right down low, and he'll go to the line for two. Indiana not very impressive. We talked in the first part of the game about getting 40 minutes of play last night. They were somewhat on the roller coaster. They played good for five minutes and uh, then bad for five, and uh, they seem to be on that roller coaster right here again to start the game. Daniels last night against Siddle, 79-56 victory for Bowling Green, so they won easily. In fact, Daniels' brother is a starting forward for Dayton, so a real basketball family. Good spin move by Wilkerson to get it the opening and gives Lindemann a dunk. You see Bowling Green tried to come out and double team. Nice job by Sharon Wilkerson of stepping through. Down to Evans. Evans already had Todd Lindemann picked out inside. Six to two now, Indiana leads it. Ninkovic with a drive. That ball slapped away. Boy, Stacy aggressive there on the board against some much bigger players. He's able to come away with that one. Well, the thing they talked about, Indiana, when they talked about Stacy, was they had the word banger. He's a big, strong, banging type of guy. And you can see Ninakovic goes strong to the basket. It's a slap down, but Stacy, only six foot four, but he's big and broad. You can see he goes up strong for the rebound. He'll get a chance for two free throws. Stacy hits that. He's 6'4, 225, a freshman. Kirk Cowan checks in for Ninkovic, who has to watch that foul trouble. Cowan, 6'7, freshman. Another guy that doesn't look for a lot offensively, more of a screener and a passer. Uh, in most cases, Larinaga, Daniels, and Stacy will be doing the scoring for this Bowling Green team. 6'4 now, Indiana's lead, only two. Patterson is playing some in the post. Evans open outside, that's a three-pointer. Great job by Charlie Miller throwing it all the way over the top. Sometimes somewhat of a dangerous pass, but Brian Evans had done a nice job. You can see that, that even though the offense was a little down on the baseline, it was much more spread, and because of the defense has a much more difficult time. Nine to four, Indiana with its biggest lead of the game. You see Bowling Green trying to use its shorter lineup and quickness spreading Indiana out, getting out in the four-corner type offense. See how much more room there is in there for the Bowling Green people to cut down the lane if the opportunity presents itself. One on one, wild shot as Lindemann comes over to help. So India's defense has been terrific here. First half. See, Indiana needs to spread it out. There's just too many people in that lane down there. There's just no room for anybody to move. Indiana just having a very, very difficult time making some bad decisions on some passes. Cowan slapped that one away. When you pack it in like that, it's easier for that other team to, to double up. Or even if you beat your man, there's a guy there to help. So that's the reason you want to keep that spread. There's Patterson on a weak side cut. That's the problem Indiana's had as far as with their offense is when they get some of their big seven-footers in there, they just have a problem. There's the plus in the top. Lindemann, bigger and stronger, able to go after those rebounds. But offensively, not a lot of good movement by Indiana so far. Six points now for Lindemann, six of Indiana's 11. And he has come out to play tonight. Taking advantage of the uh, late start that he was able to get. Late addition to the starting lineup, I should say. Evans is on a switch now as he's out at the point guarding Daniels. See, Daniels knows he's a lot quicker. Great pass right there by Daniels. Nice up and under. Allen with the easy two points. Nice job of cutting to the basket. Five point lead for Indiana. 
Lob pass to Lindemann. He's blocked from behind, but a foul that time on Cowan. Todd Lindemann has to know. He does a nice job holding off the defender. He goes up and gets the ball strong. Now take a look at it. He knows that this guy is going to go up and try to block this shot. He has to go up strong. Instead, he just goes up. He knows the guy's going to be up there. He presents the ball to him, and the guy knocks it away. He gets a chance for two free throws, but uh, he should be up there trying for a three-point play. See Todd excellent from the field at 70%, but only 10 of 23 from the free throw line, 43%. He's good on that one. But a big guy's going to get fouled a lot, and that's why it's important to hit those free throws. He hits one of two, and Patterson there for the board throws it away. Just absolutely terrible pass. Nobody there. He, he did not look to, and read the defense as far as seeing where he needed to throw. And that shot uh, misses, but good block out. Let's the ball hit the floor before Lindemann gathers it in. When Todd Lindemann's in the game, this is where Andre Patterson really needs to step out and look for that jump shot or that one or two dribbles and drive to the basket. That's a double dribble by Andre Patterson. Good call by Randy Drury. Dropped the basketball, picked it up, and then put it back down on the floor. It's a double dribble every time. Low scoring game. It's Indiana 12 to 6. 11.05 left first half. We'll be back after this word from our local station. He's back in the game. They got Muyazinovich in there along with Todd Lindemann and Brian Evans. So a very, very big lineup for Indiana. Indiana back at 50%. Oh, good hands by Brian Evans. And a big rebounding edge. Another turnover. Six now for Bowling Green. So that's gotten Indiana their six-point lead. The offense is where Indiana has struggled early. Looks like better movement this series. Just not much room in there. Brian Evans has definitely got to get out of the lane. They're going to call three seconds on Muyazinovic inside. But uh, with Lindemann and Harris both in the game, Brian Evans has definitely got to get out on the outside because there's just not any room for anybody else to be posting up. we got two guys posting up in there already. Already eight turnovers. That's the amazing thing. Look at there. As good as Indiana's defense is, they're throwing it away more than Bowling Green is. Had a season low 17 turnovers last night. Charge, good position that time by Indiana. As Daniel Stacy talk about it. So Indiana now with a two center lineup. They've got Mouye Zinovic and Lindemann. And also Brian Evans working on the inside. So a much bigger lineup than what Bowling Green can put out there. Let's see if Indiana takes advantage of their size. Tough pass into Evans as he Bad got pass the as soon just, as he got There's it. just no pass there. I mean, Indiana really, really struggling with the offense. There's just no offense. I think Coach is trying to get Indiana. They have to read the defense, read when somebody's posting up. You can't go inside and post up on top of them. That's what he was talking about to Harris about last time down the floor. Evans was already posted up. You can't go in there and post up yourself. Daniels dishes off. Number three is DeMar Moore in the game. That's Larry Neg outside. He's a good three-point shooter. And he gets that one to go, his first three. Excellent offense by Bowling Green. They're really pulling the ball out, going to slow it down a little bit, going to continue to get good penetration as Evans gets hacked across the arm. as He goes up strong right there, but they're going to spread it out, get good penetration, and look to pop it back out to Larry Neg or to Stacy for the drive. Now there's the difference in the offense, Ted. We saw Evans come from the other side. And in the same position, but when he got the ball, there were three guys around him. This time he comes from the left side, the same pass, but now nobody's with him, and that's when you make the pass so he can get the shot. There's no doubt about it. The, the other thing is going to open it up. I mean, we're banging on the, the, the problem with there's so many people inside. The guards have got to look to score. I mean, our guards have not even taken a shot. Charlie Miller at this point last night had about 10 points already. He'd hit a couple three-pointers. Sharon Wilkerson has yet to take an outside shot, as, as has Neil Reed. And as teams see that, as they prepare for that, they're just going to keep packing it in, packing it in. It's going to look like a zone, even though it's a man-to-man. 14-9, Indiana leads it. As we're 9-11 left, first half. Good help, Lindemann comes over. That leaves Holmes open. And Todd Lindemann, another rebound. Indiana on the fast break. Here's Harris. Takes it in and lays it up. Good, Good job by Harris. You know, when he gets the ball, he's got one thing in mind, and he's going to score with it. Good. Good pass by Neil Reed to get it in Harris's hands, and he took it right to the basket. 16-9, Indiana leads it. 
Norm Ellenberger talked about fast breaking. You see how Harris got out. The ball was way behind him, but he filled a lane. And great hands by Brian Evans. The second time he's knocked it away tonight. He steals it, takes it in left-handed. There's Harris. He traveled, but he got away with it. The ball was hit, although it never left his hands. He was able to go right back up with it and get the basket. Jim Laranega wants a 20-second timeout as Indiana's increased its lead to nine, their biggest of the game. He needs to slow the tempo of this game down. And Laranega's wanting to know if they've changed the rule as far as <laughs> jumping up. Randy Drury, I think, telling him that somebody slapped that ball away. Uh, Going to take a look at Brian Evans. The last two times down the floor, he's playing guys that are a little smaller, a little quicker, but watch him use those long hands and just tip that ball away. Coach Knight and the coaches always talk about bringing your hands up from the bottom. Did a nice job of just tipping that ball away. You can see he gets to the other end of the floor, does everything except finish. He just didn't make the shot. Coach Dan Dockage with some words to Brian. I'm a little surprised on the defensive end. Harris continues to go out and really play Stacy very, very hard. Stacy has not proven to us that he can make that shot yet. Until he makes a, a 15 footer, I'm a little surprised Indiana's really out there contesting because he really likes to drive the ball to the basket. Well, Indiana's starting to hit now, seven to 13 from the field. Good hands by Harris right there. He knocks it away, he's got to get on it. Wilkerson comes away, it's three on one. Evans Good pass. And count it. Good fast break, Indiana. Ball didn't hardly ever hit the floor right there. Harris, kind of a tip pass back to Brian Evans. Again, a good defensive play. Indiana just tipping the ball away. Starts the fast break. Seven points now for Evans. He was held to a season low 11 last night. Good pressure. Evans comes away with it. Nope, tipped away. Scramble. All right. Wilkerson. Nope. No turnover, right it looked there. like uh, Indiana had it. Now a layup and a foul. As play gets rather ragged, Jake Holmes tries the shot and was fouled. Well, that's a ball Indiana's got to come up with. Brian Evans did a great job taking it through his legs all over the floor. He finally came up with it, and Sharon just couldn't get it in his hands. But because of the play got very, very ragged. Good hustle by Indiana right there. Daniels leaves the game only two points. Ten short of the season's average. Here's a good look at Holmes. 6'10 freshman out of Toledo. So he's in there to give uh, Bowling Green a little more height. Only averaging two a game, so he doesn't get much playing time. This is a young Bowling Green team. You'd think a team that was named Bowling Green would change their colors to green, you know it, Laz? Well, Did it's you probably think about a political that thing. Now, you know, and it's, a lot of times you can't do much with that. Time uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> think about that while we're gone. 7.33 <laughs> left, Indiana by nine. We'll be back. Back at Bloomington, where Indiana leads 20-11 over Bowling Green. See Todd Lindemann, good feed by Brian Evans right there. That's where Sharon Wilkerson split the defense to Evans to Lindemann for the easy dunk. And then Todd Lindemann really on the boards. Good position at 270 pounds, holding his position and getting the good offensive rebound in the easy basket. And that was our finish line replay of the game. Bowling Green in a zone. You heard talk or Coach Dockage talk about Bowling Green wanting to slip into a zone. He didn't feel like Indiana handled it very good last night against Delaware. Let's see if Indiana gets a little bit more penetration, steps into the openings and gets those shots. Taking their time, shot clock down to four. And it worked that time as uh, Lindemann not able to hit the shot. Laranega with the board. Komaj is into Ninkovic, who's back in the game with two fouls. Todd Lindemann just needs to hold his position. He's big enough, he can, he can block the shot. He's going to make it very, very difficult for Ninikovic to get the shot down inside. You can see they fall back into that zone. Neil Reed finds an opening right there. He's got to drive that. If you drive it inside, you make it very tough on him. 
Lindemann looked like he was going to take that shot off the pass, but came down to regroup, and he's going to get a three-point chance. Good job right there. Good pass by Brian Evans. What I was talking about with Neil Reed, he gets the defender up in the air. This is a little bit later. You can see Brian Evans. He finds Lindemann. He's so much bigger. Nice job of finding the opening. We talk about in the zone, you're not so much reading your man, but you're finding the openings. There are certain places that are going to be open against the zone, and you've got to find them. Kovic picks up his third foul, so he was only in for less than 30 seconds. And exactly what uh, Coach Laranega didn't want to happen, his third foul does, and, and Kovic on the bench. Lindemann finishes off the three-point play. He's got 10 points now, first half, so it's Lindemann the big score for Indiana. Nice to see Todd Lindemann there. I'm always on him about not going up strong. He, got, he went up strong that time, finished the play, and because of it, he got a three-point play. Whistle outside, that's a hold. I think they're going to get Wilkerson holding Stacy down inside. Stacy is tough. Averages 15 a game as a freshman. So Wilkerson do what he can to stay with him. Laranega leaves with three fouls, or three points. Definite mismatch right there. Todd Lindman's got a switch off of Stacy. You can see Mujuzinovic comes over and helps him out right there. See, he's backed off. I think they're going to make him hit one. You can see he reaches in right there, though. Good pass as he found Komai's baseline. Bowling Green having some tough luck on their shooting percentage tonight. Indiana put, putting some good pressure on off or defensively. Harris. Oh, my. That's an oh, my right there. Woo. Put the arch on it. We're shooting it up <laughs> over Jabbar and people such as that. But uh, there was plenty of... It's starting to rain in here. He never really got turned exactly toward the basket, so the shot looked funny with a high arc. He's got his sixth point, though, and he has played aggressive. He didn't play at all last night. Here's Daniels, fakes the shot, and then goes up with it. Oh, good tip there as it uh, looked like Stacy. I think it was Stacy, only 6'4", but he's a baby bull in there. He gets those shoulders in there. Gets him square, and he's very, very strong. Jumps very well. Here's the zone again, the long cross-court pass. Oh, good fake There's what the we're shot. talking about, using the shot. But after you've used it, taking advantage of it. And Evans has nine. You can see Indiana trying to throw over the top of that zone and looking for one of the big men, either Todd Lindemann or Mujuzinovic, to get a screen over there. Komives from outside hits it, and Harris Mujuzinovic with the foul. So a chance for the rare four-point play. Look at Harris as he tried to put the pressure on, but committed the foul. You can see Bowling Green, they started the game with Laranega and Stacy being their main scorers. Daniels doing a lot of penetrating. Indiana really took that away, and I think the coach, Coach Laranega has made some good adjustments right here. Komai's really starting to look for his shots the last couple times down the floor. Komai's father. Butch Comives is the all-time leading scorer for Bowling Green. In fact, he's a senior, he averaged 36 a game, so Comives has quite a, uh, a reputation to uphold, but uh, did attend the same school as his father. Bowling Green back in a man-to-man -man after he missed free throw. 27-16, Indiana by 11, under five minutes left, first half. Bad shot right there, he's got to throw it inside. Lindemann had the position, you've got to give it to Todd Lindemann when he's got the position inside. It's a much smaller Bowling Green team. Laranega for three outside is off. And Wilkerson tries the fast break. Now he's double team. Oh, good pass. He found good Harris. Hands. Layup is off again. Uh, just off. And Lindemann called from behind. Harris had two shots inside. He couldn't get either one to go. Coach Knight shaking his head on the sidelines. That's one of those plays that they did everything right. Jaron Wilkerson found Mujuzinovic inside. He, he threw a hard pass, tough pass to catch. You see Coach Knight giving him encouragement. You can see right there, great catch, nice shot fake. Everything is done except you got to finish the play. You, I mean, you've got to make the shot. He not only misses the layup once, but he misses it twice. You've just got to relax. You've got to put it in the hole. Comives has the one and one. Good on the first. That's four for him. We look at Cole Mives, he's a uh, little kid, he's got that wild hair, he's got a tattoo on the on his leg, <laughs> got one there on his shoulder. He's got a nice left-handed stroke though. Pretty good there as he nails that second one. 27-18 now, Indiana by nine, and a full-court press. Yeah, exactly. 
Harris needs to pull it out right here. Good job by Indiana. Breaking the press. You can see they fall back into that 2-3 zone, kind of a matchup zone. They're going to match up with the wing people. Whistle on Lindemann. Let's see, three seconds in the lane as Todd gets an explanation. That's something you should nev never be called on as a three seconds against the zone because you're, you're really not doing a lot of posting. You're popping in and popping out. There's no reason you should get in there and stand for five or six seconds. And I say five or six because usually the official don't catch you the first couple seconds you're in there. Again, a whistle away. But they're going to get Stacy on a block. He went up and got Evans. It's been a physical game. Mandeville now checks in for Indiana. As Lindemann leaves, gets a good hand. As Lindemann's had a good first half. Ten points. So he's above his average already, explaining some things to Coach Felling. So Evans now has a chance for the one and one as Stacy picks up his second foul. Evans short on that, but Bowling Green uh, kicks it out. That was on Stacy. And there's timeout. Indiana's ahead 27 18. And we'll be back after this word from your local stations. Big and strong team. And Bowling Green's been out rebounding their opponents by eight a game. Travel. Let's check that stat at the half. Comives moved that foot. Sometimes even though you don't travel, it sure looked like it right there. I, I, I'm not sure that he moved that pivot foot. I think he caught it, looked like he was going to go, and the official got him. 11 turnovers for Bowling Green. Harris inside, has position, goes up. And that blocked by Cowan, misses the shot. Daniels, good crossover dribble there, get him all the way to the hoop. Harris fouls, Stacy steals. Oh, great body control there as he makes the contact and then finishes the play. And the only thing Coach Knight sees right there is he sees that Harris had that ball in his hands, and now it's turned into a possible three-point play and another foul on Indiana. Uh, when Indiana gets their hands on the ball, you've got, you can see Harris, nice position right here. He gets his hands on the ball. He's a big, strong guy. We don't see it, but they knock it away. Nice fake by Stacy right there. Uses his body. He's only six foot four, but he uses his body, goes inside, has a chance at a three-point play. Phil Bobo over the IU bench uh, for a lighter moment. And Stacy now at the line. 61% of his field goal, so this kid can shoot two full court press now. And the matchup up zone, they like to do a lot of trapping in the corners. Down See the nobody back. Harris with the slam and the foul. And this is an interesting play, Ted. We saw this against Kentucky where Harris was in front of everybody, took a dribble, missed the shot, and Coach Knight's comment was, you got to go up and jam that one. And he learned his lesson. <laughs> no doubt he did. He might have got away with the travel, and that's what Coach Larinaga is talking about. But Coach Knight, a couple times down the floor, talked about Harris. Now he just takes one big step. I think they're going to give that to him on that type of shot. I don't think he traveled, but he definitely went after it, went up to the board very, very hard. Missed on the free throw, but he still got 10 first half points. I think he tried another Off rainbow. Off the bench, too. Rainbow that time that uh, didn't go in. Indiana by 10, two and a half left. First half, wild pass by Daniels, turnover. So Indiana's defense has kept the pressure on 12 Bowling Green turnovers. Very difficult for other teams to practice the kind of pressure they'll see against Indiana. Especially in the first half, you see him get a little ragged. Here's Evans. Mandeville going up strong and lays it in. Good hands by Mandeville. Good pass by Brian Evans inside, but it was a tough one to come up with. He just kind of caught it and went straight up with it. Richard Mandeville doing a nice job setting some screens, getting people open, and then popping back out, popping into open spots. Two minutes left now. Indiana by 12. Indiana doing a lot of switching on their guards. You can see they like to run Laranega up top. Stacy for the jumper, and he does have a nice touch. Wide open there, and he hits it from the free throw line. Looks like he's got a back brace there that's come loose. He motions Something, over the bench. Yeah. See, they're setting it back. They're sitting back in that zone. Again, Indiana needs to look for the openings, get some guard penetration, dish off, and then they've got to be ready to take the shot when it's available. Mandeville way outside. Here's Reed. Travel. Tried to get a quick shot, realized it wasn't there, and ended up with a travel. 
11 first half turnovers for Indiana. We talked about guard turnovers in the opening, and uh, Sharon Wilkerson that sat down because he turned it over seven times for Indiana 17 last night. And that's at least three for Neil Reed already tonight. Jake Holmes checks in for Stacy as it was a back brace that came loose. He had to come out of the game. Daniels and Reed out front. Well, Aaron has been quiet first half. Wilkerson doing a good job on him. Just hard for Bowling Green to get their offense. They just have not seen this kind of pressure. Neil Reed made the steal that stepped on the out of bounds line. I think Indiana makes it very difficult on people that go from point A to point B offensively, and that means they really run structured structured offenses. Coach Knight not happy that they're going to reset that shot clock. He didn't feel like Indiana ever had possession of that basketball and that the shot clock should not be reset. But in any team that goes from point A to point B, I think Indiana makes it very difficult. Coach Knight does such a wonderful job of preparing the team. They know where you're going to go as Komai fires a three-pointer. Ball came right back to him. Reed hits the deck. And the call goes to Bowling Green. Reed is a scrapper, Ted. We saw it all last year. Look at him lay out there, and it takes Daniels legs out from under. Officials give it back to Bowling Green. Daniels with the jumper. And straight out. Indiana by eight now as Daniels gets his fourth point. Daniels really a good player. I'm a little surprised he doesn't take it more in his hands to look for uh, more offense and look for more shots in the Bowling Green offense. He scores 12.8 a game. So he knows how to put it in. About a 12 seconds difference on the shot clock. So Indiana. Shot clock down to 10. Needs to take one. Evans. Tough. Fell out to the right there. 15 seconds. Plenty of time for Bowling Green to set. But Comines lets her fly. Hey, that's your kind of guy. 10 seconds left for a three-pointer. When in doubt, let it fly. But it does cut Indiana's lead to five. Evans just before the buzzer. Only two. Said he was on the line, but it is a two-pointer. So heads-up play by Evans. Watching the clock. 35-28. Indiana leads it. And we'll be back with our halftime after this. Time now for the Citizens Insurance Halftime Stats. Ted Kitchell. You can see Indiana continues to shoot well. They're shooting over 50% from the field, 54%. Not getting to the line as much as Coach Knight would like to see. But the thing you can really see that is hurting them is turnovers. They've, all, they've got one less than Bowling Green, but uh, Indiana only likes to, to look at 10, 12 for the entire game. They've already got 11, and a number of those are by the Indiana guard, something Coach Knight has definitely been working on. And those are the Citizens Insurance first half stats. Citizens Insurance Company of America, there's a citizen. Second half ready to start as Bowling Green is hanging tough. And thanks to Brian Evans' buzzer beater, the lead is 11 for Indiana. They do have the ball. Wilkerson, Miller, Reed, Lindemann, and Evans for Indiana. Pass by Wilkerson out of bounds. See, Indiana started in a triangle with Neil Reed inside. They've almost got a three-guard offense in there, but they have put Neil Reed inside with Brian Evans and Todd Lindemann. As you take a look at Indiana scoring, Brian Evans leading the way with 11. For Bowling Green, Anthony Stacy once again only a freshman, but leading the way with nine points. Lara Nega outside with a quick three. So a quick change of events. Turnover for Indiana, three-pointer for Bowling Green. It's a four-point game, and in the first minute of the second half. Indiana continues to struggle offensively. Ron Wilkerson, the first time down the floor, just throws the ball straight out of bounds. They continue to try to get some screens, work the ball around. Just not a lot of room in there. Indiana's guards not taking any shots, and because of it, there's not, not a lot of openings inside. Sharon Wilkinson hacked on the wrist, and he'll get two. So Sharon did get two quick shots there. Just makes it very, very difficult offensively. Uh, as we were, we were looking at the stat sheet, we didn't have time to talk to you about 
Indi the Indiana guards played 40 minutes between the three, Neil Reed, Sharon Wilkerson, and Charlie Miller, and they got one shot. So you wonder why defenses continue to lay back. They want to play the zones. Until Indiana guards step up and start looking for their shots, and making a few shots, defense is going to continue to lay back as Sharon Wilkerson hits the first of two free throws. And he gets both of them and increases Indiana's lead to six. Sharon uh, only eight of 15 from the line coming into the game. See how Evans is a little bit bigger. He's going to play behind Stacy. Drives. Fading to the right, and the shot misses to the right. Easy rebound for Reed. Lindemann turns. Jump shot is good. Under control that time for Lindemann. Todd Lindemann sure looks comfortable in there tonight. He's catching the basketball, and he's looking to score. It's about the third time he's caught it. He's spun, and he's shot. Nice to see him gaining some confidence. 12 now for Lindemann. Bowling Green sets a lot of screens along the baseline. Good pass right there by Daniels. He saw the switch which left uh, Lindemann's man open, but Holmes couldn't get it to go. Here's a shot by uh, Reed is off. Comives has it, double team, jump ball. Reed right there on the spot. Big Bowling Green, Indiana got the ball at the halftime, so a good solid play by Neil Reed. Nice to see him get all the way to the basket. I'm gonna take a look, you can see Neil Reed comes from out of bounds right here as Comives has the ball and he just grabs right a hold of it. Call the jump ball, they go Bowling Green's way. Good crossover dribble, Daniels gets inside and that's the penetration we talked about in last night's game that Indiana's letting the penetration come inside, the easy dump and the big guys get the layup. That's the second time down the floor Todd Lindemann has had to come over and help because the Daniels has gotten by Reed and because of it uh, they got lucky the last time down the floor, but this time Brian Evans comes over, helps out, knocks it out of bounds. Two minutes into the second half, Indiana by eight. Wilkerson right up tight on Laranega. Switches now to Miller. Stacy a fall away, that's a tough shot. Good block out by Todd Lindemann. That foul on home, so the 6'10 freshman really having his trouble with Lindemann tonight. See Bowling Green, they're really doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff here. Stacy waits for Lindemann to clear, he goes up over Wilkerson, but look at Lindemann go over and block his man out. He's all the way on the other side of the basket. He finds his man, then goes after the basketball. Because of it, he draws the foul. Holmes comes out. Charlie Miller has got to get involved in the offense. Last night he came out, he was looking for shots. He looked very, very comfortable after he made a couple shots. Tonight he looks a little ragged out there. He's kind of running around. Great tip in by Brian Evans coming up and under the basket. Off the board and back in. Evans is back to his scoring ways. 13 points now. His first two of the second half. Laranega inside to Comives. Wilkerson's able to cut him off. And then Kovic with the drive. Wild shot. Stacy there. And Bowling Green resets. Shot clock was down to two. Good recognition by Daniels to see that the shot clock was down to two. It's a wild shot, but at least he got it off. Got to take it back out front, reset. Charlie Miller hesitated and just misses Wilkerson, the follow-up is good. It's a long three-pointer, probably one Coach Knight not real happy with, but you can see how it opens things up. Indiana able to get the rebound, not the shot Indiana looking for, but it, good to see him at least looking for the shot. They've stretched the lead to 12 for Indiana, 16-25 left, second half. Then, good to see a guard hitting the boards that well. Laranega does not hesitate on that three. Got great form, he nails that one from two steps outside the line. He just needs a little bit of time, but he's an excellent shooter. Laranega now with nine. And that's the Indiana lead, nine points. Lindemann shot fake, the ball slapped away. 
And the turnover gives it back to Bowling Green on the steal. And he keeps the ball down there. He just turns in a seven-footer into about a six-foot player. And you can see the guy just knock it away. And Moore comes down and makes him pay for it with a three-pointer. Jamar Moore with the three, averaging 11 for the 6-1 freshman. The lead now six points. So Bowling Green going to the three-point offense to make their comeback. Shot is off. It's five on one. Neil Reed is a lone man oh, back. pass right there. And Stacy gets fouled. Good play by Daniels. Kind of cradle that ball there between his, his uh, hand and forearm. Well, he really makes the defense commit right here. You can see how he cradles it. Neil Reed's got to come over, and then he throws it over. Nice job. Stacy fills the lane. Norm Ellenberger in the pregame talked about filling those lanes on the fast break. Excellent right there by Bowling Green getting up the floor. Indiana got to do a better job of getting back. And that's three fouls now on Wilkerson. So one of Indiana's leaders at the guard position now. Picks up his third. Stacy has 10 points. This guy's going to be quite a player in the MAC. Looks like he keeps that right elbow out a little bit, Ted. You know, most coaches will tell you to keep that shooting arm in. He puts it out there a little bit, but seems to be very successful with it. Lindemann with good position, the double team. A foul called on Laranega. See Bowling Green, Indiana yet to hit the outside shot, so they're really doubling down hard on Lindemann whenever the ball goes down in the post. That time Laranega, a little bit too aggressive, slaps Todd Lindemann across the arm. Indiana's lead is down to four. Lindemann turns, misses. Good position that time by Ninkovic as he kept Lindemann away from the rebound. Indiana only up four. Daniels looking for it to go to two as it does. Boy, Bowling Green seems to have a confidence right now, Ted. They know they didn't play that well first half. They stayed close, and now they seem to be playing loose, and they've cut this Indiana lead down to two points. Just under 15 minutes left in the game, and an offensive block called against Indiana. Neil Reed inside. They've got him running in the triangle trying to get some people open. Neil Reed gets called with a block. Last night we saw Indiana get called two or three times on the offensive end. And yes, that, that's just a turnover. Whenever you don't get a chance to shoot the basketball up at the rim, it's called a turnover. And Indiana continues to struggle with the turnover category. Last time Indiana led by two was at six to four. So Bowling Green has made a long comeback. Bowling Green has a good patience. They take their time, and I think it has a lot to do with Daniels. Daniels knows he can get into that Indiana defense whenever he needs to. More That's again, a three -pointer. same spot. So Bowling Green has taken their first lead of the game at 44-43. Bowling Green has really come out and outplayed Indiana in the first five minutes of the second half. Coach always talks about how important each five minutes is to start a half. Indiana continues to post down on the block. There's just nothing there as Bowling Green continues to play. Indiana is inside, and Brian Evans once again trying to bring Indiana back. Well, that's what the senior you need to do, Ted. You know, as uh, things are getting a little tough, there is Brian also leading the little half of the little chat there among the players. But you can see the confidence now that Bowling Green, there's Larry Nega, his father, Jim. Closest game Indiana's ever had in the Classic was in the championship game against UNC Wilmington, 73-72. A one-point uh, victory in 86. Here's Mayor Louie Zinovic in the game as Lindemann comes out. 12 points for Lindemann. As Coach Bob Knight goes to his bench. And now it's a tie game as Evans hits his 14th point. So Indiana's got the lead, and this is where the defense has to, has to get tough, and that's what this crowd is cheering for now. Look for Bowling Green to be patient, work it around, and then either get it to Stacy, Laranega. They're going to call Wilkerson with the hold right there as Laranega kind of posts him up out there about 15 feet away. He's going to be disappointed. There's no reason to foul when a guy's got you posted up about 15 feet away from the basket. See, that's, I think, Wilkerson's fourth foul. Yep, sure and is. That puts him in trouble because he's done a nice job defensively on Laranega. Daniels, very, very good with that hesitation. Look, look at him just 
one or quick two dribbles and then hesitate and then boom, he's right past you. As soon as the defense comes up on him and then he either dishes as he did right there, you know, but, or he takes the shot as he did last time down the floor. As Harris came over to help, he picks up the foul. And that's that penetration. There's so many things you can do to a good defense when that guard can get inside and create havoc. You can see anybody that's watching in a See the hesitation right here, hesitates, spins around Evans, he penetrates, and there's the opening. Mujuzinovic comes up to try to help. He stops Daniels, and then he ends up getting called for the foul. As Wilkerson comes out, Patterson comes back in, four points for Sharon. So now Charlie Miller goes to the guard position with Neil Reed. And Patterson, Harris, and Evans in the game. Great move right there, great individual move by Daniels. Harris has the rebound. It's got to be a bit mind-boggling to Coach Knight. The two guys that came out and scored 44 points between them tonight have two. Evans, Harris, Mouye, Zinovic inside the jump hook, and Big Z has two more. Harris, a nice job. He always is able to get position down inside. 12 points for Harris. Indiana by three. Loose ball, Harris on the floor, and a foul Minkovic. on Minkovic. I'll tell you, this crowd loves Harris because the way he plays and the way he battles. I think he's been a little bit in the doghouse, but no matter, no matter what, when he comes in and plays, the kid plays hard. I mean, Coach can, I'm sure Coach gets upset that he misses some layups and uh, he misses some defensive assignments, but I don't think that the could ever say anything about how hard the kid plays. He's in there on the floor. He's knocking passes away. And he's giving it 100 percent at all times. Holmes comes in for Ninkovic because of Dayon's fourth foul. Evans really looking to move offensively without the ball. Good reverse dribble there. He goes in and draws the foul. That's senior leadership right there. That's a good foul by Bowling Green. He went up and he slapped him hard. If you're going to foul him, don't give him the three-point play. In that situation, I'm not going to say anything about the three-point play. You can see he come over, he slaps him real good, but excellent move by Brian Evans, knowing Indiana needs the scoring right now and takes it upon himself to try to find it. Larinaga pleased with his team here, especially second half. But Evans has really come on strong since Bowling Green took a lead by one point. And shown some good leadership. Hits both of them. Now Indiana's got its lead back up to five by scoring six straight points. And the defensive cheer goes up. The guy they've really got to watch is Daniels, though. Neil Reed has got to do the job. He's very confident. He knows he can get by him at any time. Indiana slaps it away. Good hands by Brian Evans, but Neil Reed has got to take his game away from him and not let him continue to penetrate and draw Indiana into problems. And Charlie Miller now matches up with Moore. Good play by Daniels right there. At only 6-1, so Charlie's got to stay low on DeMar on the out-of-bounds play. Daniels, Neil Reed picks up the foul. Daniels just walked Neil Reed right into problems right there. One thing as a coach, you don't ever want the guy to be able to throw the basketball in under the basket. Daniels just slipped in there, in there spun around, and got Neil Reed to foul him. Bomeyes outside, wants to get it to Daniels. Got to help. And a switch, Daniels all the way. And Larinaga, Coach Larinaga wanted goaltending. Wanted goaltending. The ball never got above the rim, but still Indiana got a hand on it. Coach Larinaga not very happy. Tough shot by Evans, foul on Muye Zinovic over the back. But he's working inside. He got good encouragement from Coach. He's a hard-working kid, foul. and he made a great pass to Evans, a, pa a shot Evans has got to get in. 11.40 left, Indiana by five. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Let's take a look at that last play. Watch Daniels, Neil Reed trying to keep him away from that basketball because he knows once he gets his hands on it, it creates a lot of problems for Indiana. He goes all the way out, gets a hold of it. Neil Reed gets picked off. Nobody picks him up. Daniels comes in. He finally has somebody come out, Mujuzinovic. Andre Patterson slaps it away. Folks, that's a goaltend right there. There's no doubt about it. Whether it got above the rim or not, that ball's definitely coming down. And uh, in most cases, 
They're going to call goaltending on that one. Larinaga hits a shot, his 11th point, so cuts into Indiana's lead. It's now three. Here's Miller. There's a good shot open just off the back iron. Warren Green brings it up, and Daniels, he has played a lot more confidently here second half. Good slap good that time by Larinaga. Excellent. And he's going to get a three-point shot out of it. Missed it, though. And now he pressures Charlie Miller. And the foul, Miller on the push. Good play by Larinaga. Charlie Miller took it out of there. Never got control of the basketball. And Larinaga able to take it away from him. You see he tries to cross over dribble right here. And Larinaga knocks it away. He's got position of the basketball. Charlie Miller tackles him. The Falcons have really picked up their intensity here second half. And we've got a ball game, 10.55 left. Indiana kind of got their feet in the quicksand. Can't seem to get out of it right now. But look at the 6'5 junior. Rare miss at the free throw line. And important miss. It was a good catch the right there. Oh, wonderful catch by Evans. Tough pass by Neil Reed. Three on two. Goes to Stacy and then to Daniels. Penetration, the dish. Larinaga Indiana short. Very lucky. On his last two three point opportunities. Oh, that would have tied the game. Indiana scored easily last night, 85 points. Charlie Miller comes underneath the basket for the shot. Charlie Miller has just has to let himself get involved. As soon as he just starts making good sharp cuts, not roaming around in the offense, he, he gets himself open. Well, that's only the, one of the first shots he's hit tonight, but at least here in the second half, he's been much sharper, and he has been coming up with shots for the end. Comives outside. Stacy's been caught in the half. You called it on the drive. He loses the ball, and then goes up strong. And Harris draws that foul. Well, wait a minute. It might have been Patterson from the back. Oh. It was Patterson from the backside, because Harris had his position as, he, as uh, Patterson comes over to uh, talk to Coach Knight. You can see the replay right here. You can see Andre Patterson gets a, get, get, gets a good hand on the basketball. But in most cases, when you come down over the top like that, officials are going to get you for a foul. Andre Patterson got to come out in a better defensive stance. He kind of comes out standing up just before that. He comes out standing up. Stacy looks at him. You know Stacy's not going to take the three-point shot. You've got to come out in a defensive stance and get ready because you know he's looking to drive that basketball. Stacy hits both. Patterson picks up his second foul. And it's a three-point game again. Ten minutes left in the game. People for Indiana are going to have to step up, hit the jump shots. There's going to be some out there. This time it's Patterson. He's off. Comives has it. Bowling Green trying to run more here second half. Oh, good pass by Daniels. He can really handle that ball. He's very, very confident. Bowling Green knows if they fill the lanes and get themselves open, he's going to get it to them. Well, Larinaga just got it too far inside with a triple team, but wisely threw it off an Indiana leg. Bowling Green struggles when the big guys have the ball outside. It's when Daniels or Moore have it, where the penetration happens. It is their best offense and causes Indiana trouble. Silly reach there by Charlie Miller. And Miller picks up his fourth foul. So now Wilkerson and Miller, two Indiana guards with four fouls each. Well, you could say it's a bit of a picky foul, but it is a foul. There's no question about it. He's uh, he's right in front of the official. Indiana has worked 20 seconds off the shot clock. It's down to 15. Now is when you really got to grit your teeth and get down in the stance and play these people. Instead, Charlie Miller reaches in. You got to play defense with your feet. And because he reaches in, Larinaga going to go to the line and try to convert two. Harris Muye Zinovic also has four. So Indiana a bit of foul trouble right now. Larinaga hits one of two. It's a two-point game, 9.08 left. And it's a good one. Patterson inside. Boy, a tough shot, just can't get it to go. So Indiana's getting some shots, but they're just bouncing out. Bowling Green not giving Indiana any easy shots. 
Daniels really hands that ball well. Looks like he gets in trouble, but he's able to dish off. Stacy chases it down. Got to go after that loose ball. Comines is open. They can taste it. It's off. Charlie Miller knocked him. Let's see. He'll get he'll get three, I think. I think he was taking a three-pointer. It's after the shot, so it's a one and one. Exactly. After the shot, so it's a one-up. He got the ball in it, been a one shot. Here's Comines. Watch Charlie leaves his feet. That's his fifth personal. And right there, you it's see the contact. Miller picks up his fifth foul, so he is fouled out of the game. Two points and two rebounds. As Coach Knight looks uh, down the bench to see who he'll bring in. So Comines will have a... See, it's a one-on-one -on -one foul, but Indiana's over the limit with 10 fouls, so he does get two free throws, even though he shot it from behind the line. Robbie Eggers checks in for Miller. Interesting lineup now. Patterson, Muya Zinovic, and Eggers. Brian Evans may move to the guard position with Neil Reed. Kind of a one-guard offense right here is what Indiana's going to be running. Basically, while Bowling Green's running, Daniels, they get the ball in Daniels' hands, and Antonio Daniels doing a terrific job against Indiana's defense here tonight. Comines misses on the first free throw. Gets the second one to go. One point game with 8.35 left. Nine for Comines. And here we go. Now the back to the zone. Exactly, they moved back into the zone. Indiana not got a lot of great shooters in there. Neil Reed, Brian Evans, and you can bet Bowling Green's going to really be leaning to them. Evans with a quick three-pointer. Looked like he was passing off. All of a sudden comes up with a shot. Big one as it gives Indiana a four-point lead. 20 now for Evans tonight. If you want to get him back in the man-to-man, that's the quickest way to do it. Come out and hit a couple quick jump shots, and Brian Evans knows he's the guy that has to score points in there right now. See if Neil Reed can keep it out of Daniel's hand. Comines tries to answer on that three. Evans has the board. Larry Nagel will check in shortly. Oh, anticipation on that by Moore, but he couldn't get the steal. Evans misses Patterson. He gets the hoop and the foul. Credit Mulyazinovich for keeping it going, though. He's the one who got that hand on the ball. He tipped it away. Good hands by Andre Patterson. Goes up strong. You see the good shot by Brian Evans. What's Mulyazinovic get his hand on it right there. He can't get it, but he tips it away. Andre Patterson very alert, gets fouled. Good left hand, gets it in the basket. Big three-point play if Andre Patterson can get this in the hole. Jake Holmes, fourth foul. He's the biggest Much guy. Much needed for Indiana. Bowling Green has. Timeout, 57-50. Indiana leads it. 7.41 left. It's the Hoosiers by seven. here 57 50 some other games of interest around the state Jimmy Cruz's Evansville team is leading Wichita State in the late part of that second half Butler with the victory over Indiana State coach Barry Collier with a win and we've got a tough one here as Indiana still maintains the lead they've only given up once Once again, they get the ball in Daniel's hands. Makes it very tough for Indiana. They really struggle. You see Indiana really laying off people, looking for Daniels. They know he's the one who's creating the problem. He's watching the shot clock. It's at nine. Got Patterson on him. Good and the move five. There. He's looking to dish all the way. Three-point shot is good. DeMar Moore, that's his third three-pointer. And that's how he's got his nine points. Cuts the lead to four. Daniels got that look in his eye where he's dribbling that ball, waiting for that trap, and he dishes at the open man. There's Evans. Good job. He ducked between Good two finish. players, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. 
can see once again Brian Evans taking it to the basket. Not the quickest man in the world, but he makes an excellent decision. Steps through the defenders, goes up strong, gets 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 smacked. See, he's got got Daniels beat right here. Steps through, up and under. Nice finish there by Brian Evans. Goes to the line for one. 22 points now for Evans. So he's above his average. And especially showing uh, some good point production here as Indiana needs it. Going the free throw, seven point lead. Uh, again for Indiana. Patterson, Mouye Zinovic, Robbie Eggers, Reed and Evans for Indiana. Robbie Eggers got a tough assignment out there. He's guarding Moore. Moore goes, comes in at about 6'3", and Eggers comes in at about 6'9". <laughs> So he's having to chase him all over the perimeter. Stacy posts inside on Evans. Larry Nager for three, and he gets it. That one over Patterson. Four-point lead, Indiana. They're looking to go inside and outside. If they can't get penetration, they throw it in. That time, Stacy throws it back out. Patterson on the outside. Looks like things getting a little tight there for Indiana on the spacing. Reed bobbles it and a foul. Larinaga called for slapping over the back. Let's take a look at the foul trouble. Both teams starting to get into it. Miller's already gone. Wilkerson and, and the Big Z have four each. And for Bowling Green and Kovic and Holmes with four. Indiana still one away from the 10 fouls, or is, excuse me, Bowling Green, so Indiana going to the line for one and one, a place where they have struggled. Change Larinaga, he was three on the graphic. He's now four fouls with that last one, so he comes out. A little surprised with only six minutes left in the game, being that close, a little surprised they would take him out. Harris uh, short on that one. But Evans is able to come away with it. New possession clock for Indiana. Iozinovich really rolls the ball off his fingers. He needs to get that ball in his fingers and shoot the basketball rather than rolling it up there. Good shot fake by Neil Reed. Good smart play right there. No shot, but that does put Bowling Green over the limit, so Neil will get two shots from the line. We talk about er er earlier in the game, Neil Reed had shot faked and didn't take advantage. Here he shot fakes and he takes advantage of it. Either he's going to get to the basket and get a get a five, ten foot jump shot, or he's going to get fouled. Once you get that defender up in the air, you've got to drive to the basket. Other teams do it against Indiana. They penetrate, they create problems for that defense. That time Neil Reed did. He's good on that free throw. And now Larinia comes in. I think, uh, Ted, on that substitution, he just needs a player to come out, know that he's got four fouls, and, and in just 30 seconds on the bench, you can realize i got to watch myself now because I do have to help. But sometimes you don't take him out, he picks that fifth foul up right away. We saw Charlie exactly. Miller do it for Indiana. Yeah, because taking Larinaga out, it really creates a lot of problems as Indiana misses another free throw. Eggers throws it away. Good hands by Moore. Daniels goes to the basket, and Brian Evans fouls him hard. But back to Larinaga, it really takes the creativeness away from Daniels when he has to go in and look to score. When he can go in and look to either dish to Stacy or look to dish to Larinaga out behind the three-point line. And now Moore, who's also come in and, th with, and hit three points, it makes Bowling Green very, very difficult to guard. Interesting, Larinaga checks back out now. Well, whenever they're on defense, what he's doing is whenever they're on defense, he's taking him out. Whenever he's getting back there offensively, uh, he's, he's trying to get him back in so he can shoot that three. Now he's starting that offensive defense substitution with 5.40 left. So, Larinaga really playing the chessboard here. Substituting when he can. Here's Daniels with the free throw. Indiana by three, 5.40 left. Second half. Reed outside being chased by Moore. Harris looking inside to try to get some. Bowling Green looking to trap whenever they get the chance. And the steal this time by Moore. A slap though as to get that ball he slapped down on Eggers and the foul call. That's why the coaches, they teach you to kind of come up with your hands rather than slapping down whenever you, you slap down. Sometimes even when you get all ball. They're going to call that foul. And Robbie Eggers get a chance to go to the line and shoot two. Robbie Eggers is the line. A 
Awful quiet here as he lets that first one fly. It's off. Evans now with eight assists in the game. That's a ties a career high for him. So he's really been doing it all. That one fails to hit the rim, so Bowling Green gets it out of bounds. Wilkerson checks back in with four fouls for Eggers. So now Indiana with Reed and Wilkerson at the guards to put some pressure and try to keep the penetration down for Bowling Green. I don't know how much pressure you want to put on Antonio Daniels at this point in time. You can see Larry Nega looking to light it up right there. Brian Evans, great hands, comes up with the basketball. Bad shot by Larinaga. He's looking to get this quick three and try to tie this game up. Indiana should be in no hurry. They've got the lead. They've got the ball. Take your time. Set some good, solid screens. You can get Evans inside, Mujozinovic inside. There will be some openings. Reed outside. That's a three-pointer. You gotta like Neil Reed. He's, he's unafraid. No matter what the situation, no matter what the team, he's willing to step up. As he did right there. Indiana needing a big basket, and he comes through with the three. His fourth point of the night. Daniels on the drive. Boy, he almost back carried in. it right there. And offensive foul. He got called for the hook. The hook. He tried to go around Patterson, does not agree with the call as you look at Daniels. Our good friend Clark, Clark, Clark Kellogg calls that the chicken wing right there. You get to hooking him right down there. Something not called that much in college, but in the pro game, you can see he goes down and he really carries the ball right there. Now watch him, he's going to hook him right there. You can see, see his pretty tough hand. call right there, but you can see how he hooked him with the elbow and the official calls that an offensive foul. Because it's an offensive foul, player control, there is no shots taken. Evans double team, but he's able to dribble away from it. Bowling Green really looking to trap out of that right now. There has to be some openings. Whenever a team starts looking to trap, you've got to spread out. There's got to be some openings. Make them guard the entire half court. Seven on the shot clock. Reed. Good, smart play right there. Get the man up in the area. Get three shots. He was out beyond the arc. Good smart play. We talked about it earlier. You get the defender up in the air and you got to do something with it. As the shot clock's running down, he'll take three free throws. Larinaga checks back in for the offensive possession. We saw the shot fake the last time by Reed. He used it on the drive. This time he takes the shot and he gets three free throws out. So heads up play by the sophomore. Good look at Neal. Well, he's coming through in a big way right here when Indiana really needs it. Indiana struggling offensively. That's that free throw. So his second half points have been uh, important for Indiana. Just under four minutes left now. Look at the concentration as he watches that rim. Players are crossing back and forth in front of him. Nice job there. Ring around the rosy down there as uh, one guy changed and then, then the opponents change and we still got two free throws left. <laughs> he hits the second. It's quiet when those free throws go up. He hits three in a row, 67-58. Indiana leads it. We'll be back after this word from our local station. Bowling Green has been doing a nice job of cutting inside. Let's look at Indiana now. See Indiana with the offense right here. Neil Reed, the the uh, the clock starts going down here, but Neil Reed steps up. Indiana has got to step up and take those shots for the guards to open up their offense. Look for Indiana to really back off. See how Neil Reed is backed off to the top of the key. Coach Knight went out and talked to Ron Felling. Daniels is much more effective when he can penetrate and shoot or penetrate and dish. He's not a guy that wants to step out and shoot that three. So look for Indiana to back off of him and almost invite him to shoot that three. In fact, he's 0 for 7, three-pointers. Oh, you got to see the ball. Neil Reed not, didn't know where the ball was. Shot clock at 5, so Comives throws one up, and Evans easily grabs it. Indiana again needs to take their time, spread them out. Work Brian Evans along the baseline, pop into the openings. Patterson, oh, Evans, great. high low post, Indiana two. Indiana, whenever they come down, they take a little time, take a deep breath. In most cases, they get a much better shot. Timeout, Bowling Green 
as Evans has 25 points, 69-58. Indiana leads it. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Watch Brian Evans from the start of the play. You see he's got people all over him. Comes back, goes back underneath. Andre Patterson steps up, relieves the pressure. Nice job by Evans and by Mujuzinovic holding his position down there, letting Evans cut in the middle, giving him some room. Good offense by Indiana. Lob pass inside. Larinaga has it in trouble. There you see the shooting. Indiana right at 50 and a scramble. Timeout is called by Indiana. So Wilkerson able to call timeout before the jump ball is called. Let's Heads up see. play right there. That's the 22nd. 20 second timeout for Indiana. And Larinaga wants an explanation here. Coach Larinaga felt like it should be a jump ball. Even if it was a jump ball, it would still be Indiana's ball. But in this case, Indiana gets the timeout. They still have the possession error. So uh, Coach Larinaga is feeling like he got the short end of the stick right here. You see a lot of NBA teams do this now. As soon as they get the ball, you can see he's called for timeout right there. As Reed comes from behind Patterson, they must have heard Wilkerson. Wilkerson was and calling so, the time. And so they all three of them signaled for it, and they got it. So a heads up play. You're, you're, you're going to get that call about 50% of the time. The other, the other 50%, they're going to call a jump ball, which in this case, it didn't matter which, because Indiana was going to come away with the ball. 240 left. Boy, Evans is working inside. That curl cut that he just made, when that defender is behind you, that curl to the basket leaves you wide open. Reed drags the pivot foot and turns it over. What coach is talking to him about, if there's not anything down there, don't get, don't get yourself caught up down there. You take your dribble away from yourself. The only reason you go down in there is to feed the big man. 16 turnovers, make that 17 now for Indiana. Coach yelling encouragement to Neil Reed. He knows uh, Neil Reed has really stepped up big here. He's hit some big three-pointers. He's made some good plays. He just hates to see him make a play like that in an important po point of the game. Uh, Bowling Green had six players on the floor as Moore came off and uh, avoided the technical foul. Again, Neil Reed really backing off. They want to see Daniel shoot the shot right here. They don't want him penetrating. You can see Evans again, contain, contain is what coach is talking about right here in the defense. You see, creates problems. Good knock away by Mujuzinovic. Uh, Patterson slaps that away, but Phil Bova with the call from the outside, goaltending. Pretty easy to tell. I mean, it looks pretty in the camera right here on the monitor. It looks great, but there's no doubt that ball's coming down. That one's not even close. Bad decision by Andre Patterson right there. You just can't slap that one away. You got to go up and just let it go on over your head. 69-60, Indiana with two minutes left in the game. Brings it out of traffic. So Indiana's guards have, have come down and they're staying much wider right now. You can see there's got to be some openings right here. Double and triple teams by Bowling Green. Good Patterson. pass by Evans. He's got to get that one in. He doesn't though. Ninkovic with the board. Found himself too far into the basket. Got to know where you are on the floor when you catch the ball. Great pass. Daniels dished it, but Patterson blocked that shot by Cowan. Good job by Andre Patterson after a mistake on the offensive end, coming down, slapping the ball away, going up strong, coming up with a big rebound. Wilkerson now to Evans, Harris inside and a push. That's on Kirk Cowan, so Harris goes to the line. Personal foul, Bowling Green, number 31, Kirk Cowan. The thing is, it doesn't do any, 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 any good to, to get fouled if they can't get up there and make the free throws. I mean, teams are going to watch this, and there's certain guys on this team that are going to start fouling at the ends of games, and they're going to say, hey, let's see if you can make free throws. Right now, there's a couple guys for Indiana that have stepped up to that line, and uh, there's not a lot of confidence. Harris with 12 points. Watch how he rolls it rather than he kind of shoots it. That was a little better. He shot that one a little bit better, but he really rolls that ball off his hand. I mean, there's nobody that wants it to go in any worse than Harris. I mean, he's, I'm sure he's out here shooting free throws on a regular basis, probably 100, 200, 300 a day after practice. Uh, much better right there, much better. He didn't roll it off his fingers. He shot the ball much better. Two big free throws for Indiana, back up to an 11-point lead. 
71-60. Daniels on Reed. Backs him in. Leaves Stacy alone. Left hand is off. And Patterson grabs that board. And a foul. So Indiana's played some smart ball here the last four minutes as they tried to protect this lead, and they have. The Bowling Green bench rather quiet. Neil Reed doing an excellent job right there of containing Antonio Daniels. He's killed Indiana all night with his penetration. Finally, he contained him. He's still got a good shot, but he's not that comfortable shooting the basketball. He wants to dish. And then for the second time and two times down the floor, Andre Patterson up with a big rebound. Mouye Zinovic comes out as Mandeville checks into the game. Good game for Harris. 12 points. He had eight rebounds. Make that 14 as he hit those two free throws. And he got some big points early in the game when Indiana was struggling to find, find offense. Patterson with the free throw. So Indiana now the 12 point lead. Moore checks in for Ninkovic. 59 seconds left. Really sitting down. Once again, I'm, I'm kind of banging on him, but he's really in containment right here. And that's the type of defense you've got to play. Moore with a three pointer. Now full court pressure. Trapping defense by the They're Falcons. Trap. They're going to foul. And that foul on Daniels. Daniels picks it up, puts a Wilkerson at the line. Got to hit free throws at the end of a game. People are going to start fouling you. You've got to go up there with some confidence and know that you can make them. And I, I really feel like that's a, that's a lot, you know, probably 80% of making free throws is just knowing that you can do it. It's good mechanics, good pre-shot routine, and then just looking at the basket and knowing that you're going to make them. Wilkerson good on the first. Missed this first of the night from the line, but a whistle on Patterson. Play fought for that rebounding position. It's a play that uh, really has Coach Knight shaking his head. Right there, I mean, I mean, you've got to the point where you see a number of teams in that situation just send the entire team back down the floor. Coach Knight would like to think that you can make the, a good enough decision there if the ball would happen to bounce right to you, then put get your hands on it. But there, it dropped down in front of uh, in front of the Bowling Green player, Stacy, there's no way that you're going to get it without reaching over the top in a play that you just cannot make. Gives Bowling Green a chance to score points when the clock stops. Stacy at the line to try to do that. Although he's long there. Seven of eight now from the line, so the first one is missed. Good on the second. First time we've seen Javier Crespo. Look for him to foul. He's a guy that he's got fouls to give. They're looking to foul right now. Look for him. If anybody close to him gets it, they'll foul. He'll foul. Patterson, and that's exactly what Crespo does on Evans. 40 seconds left. Everybody on the team has things they need to do. And uh, Crespo, when he came in the game right there, he needed to give up a foul for the team. Comes right back out as the offensive force, Comives and Larinaga come back in. Crespo from Madrid, Spain. There he is, played one year at Springfield, Pennsylvania. Saw a quick defensive assignment. Now Evans at the line. Got it. 25 points, 7 of 8 from the line, 6 rebounds, 8 assists. So Evans, another great performance tonight. See a little disgusted there. You can see it on his face. Very disappointed he didn't get both of those to knock both of those down. Good switch by Indiana right there. Patterson, move your feet, not your hands. Daniels, oh, what a tip by Stacy as he went over. Some of the bigger Stacey. guys. And they will, Stacy will pick up that foul. Stacy very aggressive going to the basketball right there. Almost unlucky he didn't get that first one to go down. Pick, picks up his fourth. Watch how aggressive he goes to the basket here, away from the ball. Watch Stacy come in there. See, we're going after the ball. We don't go after bodies. You got to block people out first, then go after the ball. Indiana gets away with one. You see Patterson gets his hands on it right there, and Stacy slaps him. 
Andre Patterson will shoot two. Gets the roll on the first. Indiana not getting to the free throw line the way Coach Knight would like to see. On the stat sheet, it'll look like Indiana got there more than they really did because of late in the game here when Bowling Green forced a foul. But uh, Indiana needs to get to the free throw line through their offense. And that's the Union 76th point of the game as Patterson hits two free throws and a bomb that time by Stacy from the three-point line. Full court pressure, 18 Nobody seconds. Nobody down here on the other end. That's, uh, Evans didn't see it. It was Patterson all alone. But Indiana couldn't get the ball down to him on the long pass. So again, Bowling Green with the foul. Larinaga, Coach Larinaga, is calling for timeout if Indiana makes these free throws. But when they score, you can see Reedy's lips there. After they score, they want a timeout. They want to get the ball down quickly here if Evans is able to hit these free throws. But on the first. And the second. So There's Bowling your Green brings it in. Brian Evans will be your MVP of this classic. He had 11 last night, but came through big with 28. Air ball. Boy, good hustle by Daniels. He knocked the ball off Reed. And give Bowling Green the possession. Great Bill hustle. Reed did about everything he could do. He tried to block Daniels out a little bit late after Daniels had went after the ball, but there's just not a lot you can do there. Good hustle by Antonio Daniels, who's had an excellent game, really put a lot of pressure on the Indiana team here tonight. Patterson anticipated that inbounds play, steals it. it, and that's gonna do it. Mandeville will get the last shot. It's off, and Indiana has won the 22nd Indiana Classic, 78-67. And we'll mind you, our next IU game here on Creative Sports will be on Wednesday, December 